Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Keely Ellen and let's talk about some investment houseplants. This video is actually a part two. Part one will be linked below in the comments, but if you'd like to see that or any of my other videos, then please feel free to hit that subscribe button. Similarly, you can also click on that little bell next to my name. And if you click that, you will get notification every single time I upload a video so you don't miss any content. You may or may not know I own the Rare Plant Shop. That is what you can see behind me. And on this channel, people often ask me one of two questions. Question one is usually, you know, what easy houseplants are there to care for that I might want? And the second question, which I get asked not as often, but I do get asked, is Kaylee, what are some easy investment houseplants? So if I buy a given houseplant, can I make money on it? Am I throwing it away? Can I make a little bit of cash on the side from chopping and propping? Before we go any further, I would like to repeat what I said in my last video, and that is that I am well aware that people buy houseplants to simply enjoy them and not all people buy them to make money from. That is absolutely fine if you just want to buy a houseplant for your own enjoyment to have in your home. Similarly, it is also absolutely fine to consider a houseplant purchase for purely investment reasons. Both of those are absolutely fine, and this video will focus on the investment part. So before we can even even decipher whether a houseplant is a good investment, we need to really define what makes a good investment in this case. So I narrowed that down to a few factors. The first one being the price. This is the price that you would pay for the plant. So we'll call it the buy-in price. The second factor is the ease or the success of propagation. So if you buy a given plant, how easy is it going to be to propagate? Are you going to have any failures or is everything going to go pretty smoothly? Another important factor relating to that is the time in between propagation. For example, a plant might be really easy to propagate, you might get no failures, but it might be seven months to propagate. That takes a long time, that might not mean it's a great investment. Of course, the ease of care is very important. Essentially, how easy is this plant to care for if you are growing it and propagating it on? Are you going to have problems along the way or is it going to be smooth sailing? A monumental factor in deciding whether a houseplant is a good investment is the current market trend. So is it going up, is it going down, or is it remaining the same, i.e. is it stable? Generally, you probably don't want to buy an investment plant if the market trend is going down. The availability of the plant is something to consider. However, while it might be difficult for you to buy in, it will also be difficult for others to find, which could lead to a higher selling price. So this is a good consideration to make. Finally, after I've talked about each plant in this list, I'm going to give you my general opinion on whether I think each plant is worth it, because it is due to a combination of all of these factors as to whether something is a good idea to buy to make money off. Without further ado, Let's get into it. This is in no particular order. Kicking this whole thing off with an absolute fan favorite, this is Anthurium waraquinum, also known as the Queen Anthurium. Now, this plant can range, it really depends on the size of the leaves, of course. It can range anywhere between low treble digits to mid treble digits. It really depends on where you are, of course, and as I've just mentioned, the size of the plant. This one is quite large. This plant here is quite large, so I would sell this for more than simply low treble digits. Jumping right into the ease or success of propagation, I'm going to come out straight away and tell you that this thing is not the easiest. I did mention this in part one, but anthuriums are not the easiest to propagate because the space between the nodes where the petioles, i.e. the leaves, grow is very, very small. And in order to propagate from a decent amount of stem, you could probably do it from an inch, but you might need two inches. That can take a little bit of time. That can actually take up to six months. It really does depend. Not only that, but the leaves that you must grow, obviously, on your plants are not the easiest to get looking perfect. For example here, this one is not perfect. There is some possible bacteria on this leaf here, so even I'm not growing these very well. I will tell you quite openly that yes, I do struggle growing these plants, and I think I speak for a lot of us when I say that we all kind of struggle growing these plants. Unless you have an affinity for them, you probably going to struggle a little bit. They are not that easy to care for. For full reference, I am in round about 28 degrees Celsius and my humidity is more often than not at 90%. So I'm growing them very hot and very humid and I am not without my issues. These really aren't the easiest plant you're going to go for. I don't really suggest you go for this one unless, as I say, you are really good at anthuriums. 
The market trend on these plants, you may have already guessed, is stable. So it's not going up, it's not going down, it's kind of holding strong. Now, I think the main reason for that is that because this is the Queen Anthurium, it's a pretty classic type of plant, right? Most of us know it, most of us love it. If you have never seen this plant before, just know that it is the most popular representation of an Anthurium that people tend to want. This is kind of it. This is the Anthurium of Anthurium. Ethereum. It's pretty special. So for that reason, it's nearly always in demand. Now the availability is low, but it's not as low as you might think. What do I mean by that? Well, a lot of us, myself included, have more often than not stumps of these plants. I'm sure if you take care of Anthurium, you might feel me on that. You might know what I'm talking about. But a lot of us import these plants and they turn into stumps. And it's about the waiting game of getting them from stump back to AJ what you see here. Now, a lot of us, me included, whether it's a private seller or a shop, will have a lot of these stumps if we bought in this plant. And that is because this plant just doesn't like being imported and it can tank pretty quickly. Although shops have these plants in stock, they don't have sellable ones in stock. So they don't have good looking plants that they would be comfortable selling retail to their customers. This means it's probably more easy to find this plant as a stump or as by a private seller in a lesser quality form than what you see here. Of course, as with anything, you can get lucky, but generally speaking, these are not the easiest things to get. So do I think it is worth an investment purely to make money off? The answer, as you might expect, is no. I think they're hard to care for. I think they're hard to get. I don't think they're quick to grow. And I think maintaining a perfect leaf is really quite a challenge. Obviously, it's more challenging for some than others. I personally find it a challenge. So I would not recommend this if you are more or less a beginner and you're starting out with more expensive plants and you'd like to make some money. This is probably not the plant for you. Do I think it's a beautiful plant? Yes. Do I think it's worth the money? Yes just simply not to make money from. This here is the Syngonium Aurea. It's becoming more popular than what it was. This is essentially the yellow variegated Syngonium polyphyllum, and it's basically a spin on the white variegated polyphyllum that everyone has. These retail for, at the moment of recording this video, they are retailing for low treble digits, I would say. Success of propagation. Seriously, if you're not new to this channel and you watch a lot of my videos, you'll know what I'm going to say. This is the easiest plant to propagate. I don't get failures. I can do a node propagation or I can do a head cutting much like this and propagate it from that. And I won't have any issues or damage to the plant. This is pretty much a surefire bed. You can grow them in moss. You can grow them in lecker. You can grow them in soil. And you can grow them really well in water too, if that's what you'd like to do. Ease of care generally, no problem at all. They can grow, as I say, they can grow with virtually nothing and still give you really pretty leaves. They can grow in low light, they're absolutely awesome. The only thing you do have to worry about, as with nearly everything variegated, is obviously you need to watch for the leaves burning. That can be from either underwatering, too much fertilizer, or too much light. Just be careful, and honestly, you're not gonna have any problems with these at all. The market trend on this plant is going up, but it's not going up at a great rate. It's quite a slow incline on this one. Now, I believe that's because yellow variegation generally has never been as popular as white variegation, right? It is becoming more popular though. It is, it's just happening much more slowly. And slowly but surely, more people are becoming aware of these plants right here. And slowly but surely, more and more people are starting to want them. So the demand for these plants is very slowly on the rise. Availability, however, I have to say is very, very low. And often when you do get plants available, they are very low variegation. Like for example, this is a probably a higher variegate than a lot of the ones I've seen in the market. Generally, if you're going to go for a variegate plant, I personally like to go somewhere between 40 and 50% variegation when choosing a specimen. That goes both for me here at the shop and for even a, a plant in my own private collection. I do recommend that. You don't want too little because then you're not really going to make a good profit and you don't want too much because then you risk an all yellow plant. It's not going to grow and you can't really sell it. So do be careful with your variegation. Do I think this is a good investment though? Yes, completely. This is because there's hardly any of them out there. They are becoming popular slowly so you've got good time to make bank and propagate these well and they're very very easy care. 
I personally don't think this is a bad option at all. I personally think this is a pretty good option. I think if you're a beginner specifically, this is a great option because they are so easy to propagate. You're bound to make some extra cash if you go for this one, in my opinion. The next plant I have to talk to you about is the Philodendron Burley Marksberry Garter. And honestly, this isn't the best specimen you can get. I do have better ones. I just don't actually know where they are. They're somewhere back there. I just picked this one to talk to you about. This one is, it's going to illustrate a point anyway, but these plants at the moment range for, I would say, high double digits. They're actually very, very, very affordable if you want a variegated plant. If you're someone that does not want to invest any money in these and you just want to buy the plant, this is absolutely fantastic. And it's a really, really good affordable way of learning to propagate a plant and learning how to deal with variegation. It's fantastic for that. Now, ease of success of propagation is ridiculous. This is part of the reason why they are so cheap to buy, because as you may be able to guess, they're quite available. But the cool, special thing about these plants is if I just rotate this, don't get me wrong, there are two in the pot. But if I show you the stem there, you will probably notice how absolutely crazy this plant has gotten. The amount of growth points I can see on these what, two plants, there must be about eight or nine growth points on these plants. Something special just happened when these things grow. They basically propagate themselves. So in terms of duplicating this plant and growing more and managing your variegation, honestly, they are absolutely phenomenal. They also grow very quick and they plump up well after shipping. They're really good if you're bringing them in. They are very paper thin, so you do have to be a little bit careful with watering, but they are very, very tolerant of underwatering as well. So they're a pretty good hardy plant, actually. Time between propagations, I'm going to say it can be as low as two months. And for the reasons I've mentioned, they basically grow like wildfire, whether that's dividing themselves this way or simply just being able to cut them. They are really, really quick if you want to try your hand doing this. It's not all good news though, is it? Because the market trend on these plants has gone down. And I mean down. These plants used to be... I would say they were low trebles, so maybe like 160, like way back in the day. They aren't anymore. You can get these for, as I mentioned before, high doubles. The market is borderline flooded, and that is due to the reasons I mentioned. They are easy to keep alive, so no one's killing propagations. They also propagate very quickly, so no one is killing propagations. So the availability on these, as you might, you might guess, is very high. So if you want to buy one of these plants for yourself to not make money off, it's the perfect time to buy it. I don't think this price is going to get any lower for these plants. I think they're absolutely beautiful plant. You probably can't see how cute they are. Let me hold it to the camera. Very, very gorgeous plants. But do I think they are worth the investment? Categorically, no. I would avoid it completely in terms of investment. The only reason I would buy this for investment terms would be as a learning tool to learn how to propagate and manage variegation and everything else. They are a great learning tool, but honestly, in terms of actually making your cash back, I would not touch this one. Buy it for yourself. Give it to your friends. Don't try and make money off it. You're going to be waiting a long time. So this rather miserable looking selection I have here, you may be able to tell, is the variegated ZZ plant. Now, <laughs> I'll get onto this in a minute, but just know that these plants here, something like this, retails for, I think, low trebles. Last time I checked, it was low trebles. So less than 200, but it's going to be between 1 and 200 probably for maybe a single stemmed plant. Ease or success of propagation, let me tell you personally, for me, this is not an easy plant at all. Now, now with ZZ plants, you can propagate them from a leaf, and I have done so. However, at least in my conditions, because it's very humid here, that's not very easy to do, and I've had an awful lot of rot. Similarly, of course, I have been able to do it a slightly different way and get some growth from them. Is it easy? No. Mainly because they can burn, as you can literally see here. This, this particular pot is demonstrating all of the issues that I have with variegated ZZ. It's a beautiful plant, but time between propagations is only unbelievably slow. This is not a plant you can make a turnaround on very quickly. If you choose to propagate this plant, you could be waiting anywhere towards a whole year for these things to grow. They are not the fastest, so it's not that they're not necessarily worth it, but this is a long game. This isn't something you can turn around quickly as you can with some others on this list. Apart from the burning on the leaves, they are quite easy care. I would just say don't overwater them. I mean, mine here is growing in Lekka and it doesn't love me. I don't really advise growing them in Lekka. It's not really ideal for this plant. I do have some plants in soil that do much better than this one. Just be really careful with leaf burn and overwatering. The market trend, however, 
I'm pleased to tell you is going up. Not at super quick speeds, but it is going up. And that is because not many people have them and they are very, very, very slow to propagate. So in terms of this being trendy, yes, absolutely. Also, if you think about it this way, as we get more beginners coming into the realm of houseplants, most of them will find out about the regular ZZ houseplant. Obviously, this one's variegated. So it is normally a very good choice of ZZ lovers because they already know how to care for the plant and they know how tough the plant is and they've got a good grasp on it. So for that reason, the market trend is going up. Availability, as you might have guessed, is unbelievably low because it's slow to propagate, because it's just slow to grow. It's just a slow plant. It's beautiful, but it's slow. Do I think it's a good investment plant? Yes, if you have the patience. I do think you'd get a return on your investment, no problem, if you've got the patience to deal with all of this. It's certainly not, as I mentioned before, it's not a plant you can turn around very quickly and make a profit from. You are doing this for the long haul if you choose to do it. So yes, I love them. I think they're great investments and you will turn a profit, but your return is not going to be very quick at all. You're going to be waiting a little bit of time. The next plant we're going to talk about is one of my favorites. This is Philodendron Glorious. For those of you that do not know, this is essentially a hybrid plant between Philodendron Gloriosum and Philodendron Melanochrysum, which makes it pretty tough, but I'll get onto that in a moment. So these plants range, honestly, it's kind of different country to country, but these plants can range anywhere between low trebles and even mid trebles. I have seen them go for mid trebles in the US. They're a little bit cheaper where I am, which is in the UK, but they will set you back a little bit of money. That's probably because it's a very desirable plant. It's hardy and it is a hybrid and we love our hybrids, do we not? Ease of propagation, honestly, they're okay. Now what I do find is these plants will send up shoots far quicker than they will root. So you might get, you know, something with a leaf on it, but it takes a little bit longer for these plants to root, I find. Once they're going though, they will grow actually quite quickly. Once you get them on a pole, they will really take off. And let me tell you, when these things are mature, they look so beautiful. Honestly, Google a mature one, you will see what I'm talking about. They are so, so gorgeous. Generally, I have around about a 10% failure on these plants. That's possibly due to slow root growth, possibly due to a bit of rot, just the usual things. Nothing I would really consider into the purchase because I don't think you're going to have a problem if you decide to cut this plant and propagate it. I do think you'll be okay. Now, although these plants are very successful to propagate, they're not really the quickest plants in the world, I'm afraid. It can take around four months to repropagate your plant, which isn't too bad. It's not the slowest, but it's not the quickest. So that's something to bear in mind, given that your initial cost might be a bit higher than some other plants. Ease of care. Apart from the fact that spider mites absolutely love these, they're quite easy. I think they can go a little bit more without water than some others, especially for a velvet type. I think they're great. But honestly, the parents are really hardy plants. Gloriosum is a hardy plant. Melanochrysum is tough as nails, especially when they're younger. So generally speaking, these plants are really tough. So you shouldn't have any problems in terms of actually growing them. The only problem you might have is sizing them up, but I don't think it's too difficult to size them. Just make sure they're climbing and they'll be okay. So the market trend on this plan is, is difficult to talk about, to be honest, because they're not that available at all. You really don't see many people selling them. Now, I don't believe that's anything due to the failure on propagation, because at least for me, that there is no real failure there. So I'm not really sure why these plants aren't circulating more. Maybe it's because people don't know about them. I don't really know. The market trend either way has been stable. I think this is a classic hybrid and generally it's done under the opinion that if you can afford it, buy it. And no one's really in a rush to propagate it. Maybe. I really can't quite place where this plant is at in the market, but I can tell you at least it is stable. The only thing that's going to happen to this plant if it changes is it will go up because not enough people have the plant. It's very desirable. It's a hybrid. It's a heart shape. It's easy to care for. It's not going to go down. The only thing is, will it go up? I predict yes, because I just, I, I can't see why I wouldn't, to be honest with you. But do I think it's a good investment plant? Yes, I do. Because not many people do have these plants. And honestly, the more that people do find them, the more people are going to want them. You're not going to struggle to sell this plant because it is a heart-shaped philodendron. And I'm sure a lot of us know just how desirable heart-shaped philodendrons are generally. You're not going to have a problem. So although the price initially might be a little bit high for you, I don't think you're going to miss out at all. Propagation time isn't too long, so you're not waiting too long to get things done. I think it's a good bet. I honestly do. If you can find one, it's a good shout.
Last but not least, yes, this is a very small plant. This is a tiny propagation. This here is Philodendron domesticum variegatum. This is variegated Philodendron domesticum. You can get these plants for low treble digits. I have seen them upwards of 220, you know, pounds, euros, whatever have you. And that's usually, I've got to mention it, it's usually for like a one leaf cutting. It's not often that you get a full plant for the money. Now, I reckon I know why this is because the ease or success of propagation is not very good. At least it's not for me in my experience. Now, I used to propagate these a certain way and I was having 50% loss rate on these propagations. It was not sexy, put it that way. I've changed what I've done a little bit and now I'm getting closer to a 30% loss. So for example, every 10 plants, I might lose three of them just due to the perils of propagation, rot, whatever have you. So they honestly, they're not the easiest to propagate at all. That said, time between propagation can be quite quick. I have to say it's quite quick. So if you do have enough propagations left, you'll be okay. You can bounce back from it. So although it's perilous, you can get propagations back quite quickly. As long as you've got good growing conditions, two to three months, you will be able to propagate again from these plants. Obviously, not if they're this small, but if you have a mother and you're cutting from the mother, two to three months will get you another propagation out of it, no problem. Ease of care on these, surprisingly, even though they are a nightmare to propagate, they are quite easy care. The only thing that I've had troubles with with these are not even reversion, but basically going all yellow. Those are the main problems that I've had with these. In terms of growth, not a problem. In terms of sizing up, not a problem. Quite fine. The variegation is not as stable as I would like, and I do find more often than not, specifically on my plants, because they do have quite a lot of variegation, I'm getting them turning quite yellow all the time. So that is something you definitely need to consider when propagating these. It's the same thing you need to consider with anything variegated, but these particularly seem a little bit worse. The market trend on these plants, I would honestly say, is stable, though not many people either have this plant or they're showing that they have this plant. Now, I suspect a lot of the reason that these are not very available, because they are not, that is due to the perils I've mentioned previously with propagation. Basically, they're not very successful. To get them to be happy takes a little bit of work, in my experience. If they are not totally happy, they just won't really grow. They won't grow leggy, they just won't grow. It's one of those plants. So so for that reason, I think that's why we're not seeing them on the market very much. I'm not seeing many people sell them at all. And I think usually when you can get these plants, you are starting from a one leaf cutting that someone is essentially selling on Facebook or whatever, which is fine. But you need to account for that when you buy the plant and you want to grow it big enough to then get an investment. So if you think you can handle this plant, go for it. If you don't, maybe go for something like the plant we mentioned earlier on, the yellow variegated syngonium. That's probably a better investment for you than this one if you're not too too sure about taking on a little bit more of a demanding philodendron, I would say. So all in all, is it a good investment plant? I would say yes, but you have to consider the size of your mother plant and you have to be prepared to lose. I mean, you should be with everything, but be prepared to lose 50% of your propagations. If you can do that and you still think you can make good profit because these aren't going anywhere, the market trend is absolutely stable, then you'll be okay. Just to go back to market trends really quickly, I do think the market trend will go up because honestly, when these things get big, they get gorgeous. They have a really wonderful... That's my living wall. My living wall's coming on watering my plants. Let's just talk through it because we're on the last plant. These size up beautifully and they just look great. So I think the more people that see that, the happier they're gonna be about wanting to have one in their homes. So the market trend is stable. I do think it'll go up. I do recommend them if you can account for the perils of propagating them because there are a lot of plants out there that are easier than this one. And that is it for today's video on beginner's investment plants. Obviously, there are a ton more plants than this, and I'm more than happy to cover them. So if you have any suggestions for plants that you'd like to see me talk about, if you'd like to see my opinion on them and whether I think they're a good investment plant, please feel free to leave them in a comment below. I will look at all of your comments, and undoubtedly, there will be a part three later on where I incorporate more of your suggestions, and we take a look at some more plants and decide if they're really worth the cash. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. Similarly, if you'd love to see any more of my content, whether it's a tour of this shop and to find out what's going on, more investment plans, more plant hauls, more informational videos, anything you like, then please feel free to click that subscribe button. You can also click that little bell to get notified every single time I upload so you don't miss a trick. 
That's it for this video, guys. Please leave your thoughts and suggestions down below. And until then, I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.